Hi everybody, it's Make It Month 10, which means the year's nearly over. I'm really not sure where the year's gone, uh, but this month is going to be all about reticulation. Reticulation is a process that can get you really beautiful, I call it moon textures, crater-like textures, undulations in your metal. I'm not sure if the camera will be picking this up or not. Um, it's really good fun to play with. And one of the lovely things about it, but also frustrating things depending on um, how you feel, is you never 100% know what you're going to get and you're never going to be able to 100% replicate it again. It's very much an art form um, and it makes one-off pieces, which is why it can be so lovely. It's normally done in silver. It works just as well in gold, but the reason it's normally done in silver is because gold's so expensive. Um, and I always use sterling silver because when I do reticulation it's always um, because either a student's asked to do it sort of last minute or um, I just have a bit of a whim and I want to have a go. So I always use what I have to hand but if you want to get really dramatic results you can get reticulation silver um, which has a higher copper content and therefore the results are just way more pronounced. So. Sterling silver, for those of you who don't know um, about the percentages of alloys, sterling silver is 92.5% pure silver and the other 7.5% is copper. So that's why um, with sterling silver jewellery you sometimes see the 925 stamped on it. Reticulation silver is normally 80% pure silver and 20% copper. So it's more than twice the amount of copper that's in um, sterling. And like I say, that's how they get the more dramatic results. But there's also now, um, it's called Crinkle Sheet, and Kernelcraft has sent me a tiny bit to try and show you, because I've never used it before. Um, because this is more expensive than normal silver, than sterling silver, quite a bit more expensive. But the idea behind it is it's supposed to take out all the work and all the, um, Risk isn't the right word, but it's, it's more likely to give you very good, very dramatic results on the first heat. Whereas you're going to see in a minute with normal reticulation process, you have to anneal and clean and anneal and clean your metal multiple times and then have to have really good torch control to get the nice results. The way the process works is um, all the silvers that we're using, so whether it's your sterling or whether you've got some reticulation silver, they're not pure silver. They're made of an alloy of different metals and different percentages. So like I say, the sterling silver is 92.5% pure silver, fine silver, and the 7.5% is copper. And then the higher 80 to 20 with the um, reticulation silver. But the reason you heat it or anneal it multiple times is because every time you heat and anneal it, you're slightly separating the copper content from the silver content and what you're aiming to do is end up with all the copper content trapped in the middle of the silver sheet and all the silver, the pure silver content around the outside of the sheet so that the separate layers and when you heat them the final time they're going to melt at different rates and that's where you get all these lovely undulations and, and textures appearing from. Partly due just to personal preference and the way different people do things and partly due to the fact that there's different silver alloys available. Um, again, reticulation can be one of those things where you start reading up on it, there's a lot of contradictory information or seemingly contradictory information out there, but it's partly to do with um, the less copper that you have in your silver alloy or gold alloy, the more times you are gonna have to anneal it, so heat it, cool it, clean it, heat it, cool it, clean it, um, to get that separation process. The higher the copper content, the fewer times you need to do that. So when you read some tutorials or watch things on eBay, they might on eBay, <laughs> on YouTube, they might tell you to um, do the annealing process sort of three to five times, whereas other people will tell you you need to do it up to twenty times or twenty plus. Um, so we're not we're going to aim for the middle. Depending on um, the amount of time that we have, so for example if I'm doing an inner day workshop or it's one of my two hour evening classes, I'll either tell students to do the annealing process between 10 and 15 times 
But when I say that, it's because I know how easy it is to lose count. So when I tell people 10 to 15 times, I'm actually expecting them to manage to hit about 7 to 12. Because um, like I say, they either get a little bit bored of <laughs> waiting or um, they lose count. But also when we do it as well, I, I tell people keep a little tally chart as you're going. Because after you've done it sort of two or three times, it is very, very easy to um, lose count of where you're up to. And normally the thicker the metal, the easier the technique is, but because I'm just using what's laying around, I'm going to just, ooh, <laughs> words today, I'm going to go to 0.5 mil thick sheet. These are just off cuts from my scrap box, which is why I'm using them rather than something a bit thicker. Um, so I've got a few of these, I might as well, because they're small, um, heat a few together. And I'm also going to do it to some wire just to show you that you can, because it's nearly always demonstrated um, on sheet metal but we have used wire quite a few times it's normally when students want to make like a tree bark type texture um, that's when we'll start considering reticulating the wire and because it's like I say quite an artistic technique you never quite know what you're going to get there's always a chance you're going to melt certain areas there's a certain amount of shrinkage involved in this process so normally when people would do reticulation they would do it on a big sheet and then they would cut out the all the sections that they really like and turn those sections into jewellery. But again, because we're using little offcuts, I'm just going to go small scale. Um, but it's up to you what size you want to work with. Right, I have my torch lit. I've got my silver, my cut sterling silver pieces on my fire brick. And I'm going to anneal them in a second. So I'm just going to pick the torch up and I'm going to heat the whole lot until it goes that nice dull pinky colour. It's very cold in the studio today so it's going to take a bit longer than it normally would but there we go. Get this one. Get the wires. So remember when you're annealing you don't want that bright red red red, you just want the pinky blush. And you can normally see the flame, the bounce off of the flame, a bit orange. Can you see it there? There we go. So I'm going to turn my torch off. And then I'm going to cool and quench these. I'm going to pick them up with my insulated tweezers, quench them in the cold water, put them back on a cold surface for a little minute. Oh, <laughs> drop it in the pot. The reason that one's a funny colour is because that is a leftover from when we were doing the um, electro etching. Whereas the rest of these pieces are just leftover sheet off cuts. Right, so now I've cooled those. Pick this little one out that I dropped. I need to pickle them. Come on. There we go. So I'm going to put them in my pickle pot. And leave them in there until they're clean which means until all that blacky grey oxide has gone and they're nice and white it will probably take a couple of minutes right it's been a couple of minutes and fish these out in the water take them out and then I'm going to give them a good scrub with this brass brush and also the reason my um my quench pot my water is a bit of a funny color today is because i've squirted some soap into it just to act as a little bit of lubricant while i'm giving these a scrub now normally i would pick these up and hold it while scrubbing it but because I've got the camera in my hand, <laughs> I'm just going to go through the motions. But obviously this isn't ideal because I don't want to ruin my um, tea towel. But the point of it is any last little bit of oxidised copper on the surface, oh, here we go, um, I just want to scrub and remove so I'm just left with the silver. Torch is back on, I'm ready for my second anneal. Every, oh, sorry. Every time I do this, the metal is going to stay cleaner. And that's the depletion gilding beginning to take effect. So you can see there's dark spots there because this is only the second time, but you'll notice when we're up to the sort of fourth time 
the silver stays fairly white and it will become harder for me to see when it's up to a kneading temperature. So that's when I'm going for that orange flick of the flame. You can see that orange bounce off, so that's telling me it's up to temperature. Move on to my wires. And each time it's going to be quicker to clean as well. So more and more fine silver is coming to the surface and all the copper is either being scratched off with a brass brush or being pushed into the um, middle of the silver sheet. So I just need to keep going at this. I'm going to cool it again. I'm going to put it in the pickle pot again until it's clean. I'm going to scrub it with the brass brush again and just keep repeating until I've done it about, well, normally I go for about 10 times, but I think today I'll go for about 15. It's my third anneal. I've just taken them out of the pickle pot, rinsed them in the water. I'm going to get my brass brush, make sure it's wet. The, the, I, the reason that it's got to be wet and the reason some people like to use a little bit of soap is um, for lubrication because if the brass and the silver were dry and then you scrub the brass brush all over it, what you run the potential of doing is actually plating the silver with a layer of brass because the friction, you know, it just the brass wears off and sticks to the silver. Whereas if you keep it wet or use a little bit of lubrication with it, it should just make it nice and shiny. So I'm going to give all these a scrub um, and then I just need to keep annealing. So keep repeating the process. This is going to be my third heat. And then in terms of the video I'm going to skip a few steps because nobody wants to <laughs> watch me doing this sort of 10-15 times and then I'll catch you up later. So can you see this time they're perfectly white? There's no little grey shadows on them that's just <laughs> just scrap bits of fluff um so from now on i don't need to use the brass brush because there aren't any oxides on the surface of the metal anymore that need removing so all i need to do is um carry on annealing cooling and cleaning them um and i'm now on to number eight You're probably now going to see that the um, you don't see the red colour as much either, the kneeling pinky colour. So I've got the orange bounce off, I know that piece is annealed but you're not seeing the same um, definite colour as you were earlier on with the initial anneals. I've annealed 13 times. so. I've heated my silver up to a kneeling temperature, cooled it, cleaned it in the pickle and the first few times scrubbed it with a brass brush. And now I'm going to do my final heat. Now this time I'm going to do them one at a time just so that I've got more control and I'm also going to use my tiddly torch. Partly because this is a small piece of silver but the main reason that I've swapped from my normal torch is because um, as some of you know the normal torch has a tendency to make the camera go in and out of focus whereas the reason I'm using this one in a lot of videos is the flames a lot smaller and it's less likely to cause issues with the camera focus so up to a kneeling temperature to begin with and then when it gets up to temperature when it starts going a bit redder as soon as I see any movement I'm going to move to a new part of silver see it shimmering so I'm going to move Find a new part. It's important that I keep moving as soon as I see movement because otherwise it's going to get too hot and it will fully melt. Whereas I'm just trying to melt the core. Now I'm just playing with it, so I'm going in, heating an area that I want to focus on, waiting for the shimmer. Get the torch off, find a new area.
wait for the shimmer, take the torch off, move to a new area. And it's up to you, you can um, reticulate and texture the whole piece, or you can um, texture areas and leave other areas plain for a bit of contrast. Let me focus and you can see how this is getting on. You see I'm getting these sort of undulating, crinkly textures. So when you're done playing, <laughs> quite often it sticks to the brick because it got so hot, I'm going to quench it and then I'm going to put it in my pickle and leave it in there until it um, is nice and clean. There we go. So, because it's just out of the pickle and it's matte, you're not going to be able to see the texture as well. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a little scrub with the brass brush. And then I'll show you how it's come out. Next up I've got my piece of wire and I'm going to do the same. So I'm just going to get it up to a kneeling temperature. And then I'm going to get it a bit hotter. And as soon as it starts to shimmer, I'm going to move to another part or pull away. And then what I'll do in a second, I'm going to flip this over and do a little bit on one of the other sides. This is a different side now. Turn it back up to temperature. That sticky bit is some... Um, excess flux that was stuck to my soldering brick. But generally speaking, we don't flux when doing reticulation. So either when annealing or when doing the final heat, it's just the heat in the metal. There's no fluxes, no solders, nothing fancy. So one reticulated piece of silver sheet. I'm going to do a close-up of this so you can see it properly because it's quite shiny so the camera is struggling to focus on it. Um, but it's got lots of little craters on the surface and it's not come out too bad considering how thin the metal is because let's say normally when doing this we'd be working with something a bit chunkier. So this and this were both one mil thick sheet. Um, and the little pendant. Whereas this is only 0.5 mil, so it's half as thick. So there's less material to be able to sort of move around and undulate without creating little holes. Um, and there's the wire. So again, I'll do a close up so you can see it properly. And there we go, one reticulated piece of silver sheet. Articulated silver bar, silver wire, and this is just a little example of how it can look on thicker material. So these are all sterling silver. So we said at the beginning of the video, you're never going to get quite as much definition with sterling as you would with reticulated silver, but you can definitely get some nice textures going on. And the other thing is this ring, um, although it's reticulated, I also sanded certain areas back, so it's a mixture of reticulation and 
some smoother sections somewhere. <laughs> Just as a little recap, so what we're saying is the, the reason that the reticulation works is because you anneal the metal, you anneal the silver multiple times so that you remove all the copper content from the silver from the surface layers and you're only left with copper in the middle of the metal. So you've got copper in the middle of the metal and fine pure silver on the surface layers around the outsides. So therefore you've got two different metals that have been separated through the annealing process. So when you start to melt them, when you bring it up to melting temperature, they melt at different rates and that's how you get all these undulations and everything moving around and getting the crater effects. So let's say it's normally done on silver, it can be done on gold, it works easily on gold, it's just the price that puts some people off. Um, but it can't be done on pure metals because the reason it works is because of the separation of the alloy. So it can only work on alloyed metals and alloys are more than one metal mushed together to create a new metal. But in the spirit of never saying never, I thought I'd have a little play, this is a piece of copper. So this is copper, pure copper sheet, and I managed to reticulate it. I had a blooming fight on my hands to get it there. <laughs> it took a long time. Um, I will do some demos later in the month showing you how you can reticulate copper and brass or bronze, you know, other non-precious metals for people who want to have a play without, um, without the expense of working in silver. But it was just to show you that um, it worked. And again, I'll do a close up so that you can see it properly. And here's the copper. So you can see that I've got some really quite deep details on this. But like I said before, it was a lot harder. It took a lot longer um, because it's really difficult to melt copper when it's bigger. Um, if I'd done a little bit of copper wire, similar to my silver wire, it would have been a lot easier. But I'm going to show you how I did this later in the month. And I'm also going to show you the um, little bit of crinkle silver. So I said, I've never used it before, but in theory that should just get some really lovely deep patterns on its first heating compared to having to do that um, annealing process over and over and over again. But let me know what you think. Have a play.